Hey everyone, welcome to Venture Forward. It's mid-May 2023, and just a short midweek update this week, featuring a little bit of much-needed tinkering on the Jeep. Now my Jeep RNG has a Genesis dual battery system with two Optima yellow tops, and it's had this system installed for close to seven years now. It served me very well, and it keeps the crank battery isolated from all of the other aftermarket electronics I've added to the Jeep over the years. So I can operate electronics, lights, and appliances, and run the accessory battery into the ground, and the Jeep will still start on the crank battery with no trouble whatsoever. A little earlier this year when I took the Jeep out into the Arizona mountains, I noticed that as soon as it got dark out and I lost solar power from the sun, the accessory battery voltage dropped abruptly. I mean, it, it was just... <clears throat> Now normally I would think, okay, this is just a bad battery, let's swap it and move on with our lives. The thing is, this is the second time this has happened in less than two years, so I keep going through accessory batteries. The question is, am I getting lame batteries, or is there something in my system that isn't running optimally and is draining my battery quickly? I'm going to poke around with a multimeter to see if I can find anything abnormal that might be draining the battery. But first, I'm going to unplug the solar panel to remove solar input from the equation. With the solar panel plugged in and just getting a little bit of sunlight, the battery is reading around 11.5 volts. Now with the solar panel unplugged, the battery is showing only 10 volts. That's no good. These four are for the 12 volt and USB outlets I have in the Goose Gear platform where the back seat used to be. And Ursa is for the entire camper and that has outlets that are always hot also. Those might be the biggest parasites, especially since the fridge is always running on one of these. Although the fridge is off right now, I don't have anything in it. To test the current and amps, I disconnect the negative cable from the accessory fuse block. Then I connect the multimeter in series to once again complete the circuit, and that'll give me a reading of how much power is flowing through that fuse block. I'm showing about 0.4 amps of current on my accessory battery, and I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's too bad. Now this particular reading is with everything unplugged except for my camera batteries which are still on the back charging via USB. I'm going to see what happens when I turn the refrigerator on which is a 23 year old ARB 35 quart fridge so it's very old it might not be as efficient anymore. 1.5 amps with the fridge on and the Optima yellow top battery is currently showing 8.6 volts so we're in poor health right now. Alright, so now the alternator is engaged and I'm showing 13.7 volts on the battery through the alternator. So this is normal amperage when the system is in good health and the fridge is running. All in all, it does not look like my accessory fuse block is drawing much. And it looks like with nothing plugged in and nothing turned on, there is 0.1 amps flowing through the accessory fuse block. I don't do this often, I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about, but 0.1 amps doesn't seem like it'd be a problem. You might have a better understanding of all this than I do, so please don't hesitate to share your advice in the comments. Although I always try to do things correctly, I only know enough to be dangerous, so your insight is greatly appreciated, not just for me, but for others who might be watching this video. There is one relatively recent outstanding item that I need to check, and that's the Switch Pro Switch Console. That controls my fog lights, my air compressor, my sway bar disconnect. That is always connected to power too, and I didn't wire that myself, so it's not going through the accessory fuse block. In fact, I've never seen the module, so I don't know where they put it. There you are. Control module for the Switch Pro, and looks like a big red cable to positive battery terminal. 
All right, I don't like testing current on a positive terminal, but it seems like there are multiple grounds in play, so I'm gonna use great care. The Switch Pro 9100 in its idle state is only drawing 0.03 amps, so I don't think that's a problem either. Well, that was informative. What I did find out was that all of my accessories seem to be drawing an um, acceptable amount of electricity. The one thing that I can say for certain is that the Optima Yellow Top is hosed and it's not holding a charge through the night. So that's my next step. The battery is still under warranty, so let's swap it out. That was fun in the auto parts store parking lot. And I'm looking at the Victron app. All systems are go. Voltage is 13.03. But this is great. All that's left to do is just keep an eye on the new battery and see how fast it depletes. I suspect that the main thing that kills the battery is leaving the refrigerator on 24-7, 365 days a year. And if it's not getting any help from solar, if it's not getting any help from the alternator, then that is going to absolutely hammer the AGM battery. So that abuse of the electrical system, which is completely my doing, in conjunction with probably the Optima yellow top batteries being lame, is why I'm only getting maybe about 10 months out of the accessory battery before it's spent. Now I have to address this because I know what you're thinking. Chris, you have to stop getting Optima batteries because they aren't that good anymore. Now the reason I have these Optima batteries and not something of better quality is because for the past six years I've lived on the road. I didn't have a residence. I didn't have an auto parts store that I could just go to anytime for a special order. If you're a full-timer and you're constantly on the move, then you need to work with what's on the shelf of your nearest auto parts store. When I first installed the dual battery kit sometime in 2016 or 2017, I had two nice Odyssey batteries. They lasted two years until I found myself in Newfoundland and I needed to replace them urgently. So I called around auto parts stores in Newfoundland and nobody was an Odyssey dealer. There was no way to get Odyssey batteries, at least not quickly. But what I found was Optima Yellow Tops were in stock all over the place. So if you're a full-timer, the best battery you can get is one that is heavy, it has two posts, and it says battery on the side. As an addendum, now that I'm stationary, as soon as these Optimas are out of warranty, they're gone. That's it for today. Now I'm going to pack the Jeep and head on up to Overland Expo West 2023 in Flagstaff, Arizona. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you there.